Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to try and prove how the rate of reaction of an enzyme changes with pH. Now, you could do this experiment also with different temperatures as well. So our independent variable, the variable we're changing, is we're going to use different pHs. And around the room, we've got different pH buffers going from, uh, I think, it's 2, 3, no, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay? So we've got a variety of different pH buffers, and buffer is just a substance that keeps a pH at a certain level. Then we've got starch solution, okay? And starch is the what? What do we call it uh, for amylase? Amylase is an enzyme, but starch is what it, what it breaks down. So we call it the... Substrate. Yes, we call it the substrate. So we've got starch, which is the substrate, and that starch is going to be broken down by the amylase into what? No, no, it's broken down by an enzyme. It's broken down to carbs. Where well, is a carbohydrate? Starch is broken down into it's glucose. Well done. It's broken down to a simple sugar. Okay, and the test for starch is what? What's the food test for starch? And we just did a poster about this. All right, somebody else then? What's the food test for starch? Yeah. Not Benedict's test, no. Iodine. Iodine. Good, we just did a poster. Just... Oh, yeah. Go on. Right, so we do iodine, okay. Alright, we've just done our poster on this. So iodine is the test for starch, but iodine will not test positive for just sugar, just simple sugars. So what's gonna happen is if we test starch, it'll go what colour? What colour will the starch go? No, go on. What colour will the starch go? Black. Good. Okay, but it will stay what colour if there is no starch? Blue. Not blue, that's when you get bended to buy your at. Brown. 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 Alright. So just to show that and to test it's working, I'm going to take a little bit of iodine. I'm going to put our iodine in here. And I'm going to put one drop of starch, just to prove, you don't have to do this, but just to prove it works, there we go, that's what we're looking at as a positive reaction. Now, when you set this experiment up, it's really important that you have separate syringes, and they keep the syringes separate all the time. The amylase use the small syringes. The pH buffer and the starch use the large syringes, okay? And don't mix them. So we're going to create our reaction here. To create our reaction, we're going to take two milliliters of starch, and one member of your group can be doing this while the other member of your group is going to be doing something else. So two milliliters of starch, and then we're going to take two milliliters of the pH buffer that we have chosen. So we're going to do this experiment five times, one with each different pH buffer. Now, we're not going to add the amylase yet. It's really important we don't add the amylase yet, because when we add the amylase, the reaction's going to start. We take our iodine, and we put a few drops of iodine into each well. That two would be fine. Okay, so you just keep adding it. So I think there's yellow in the middle of one. All right. Sorry, I don't Fill all of the wells up. Oh, that one's been contaminated, so I won't use that one. Okay. Between each experiment, you're going to have to wash it out and start again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our reaction tube here. Okay. And I'm going to add one centimetre cubed of amylase. And at the same time I add the amylase, I'm going to start the stopwatch. Now, every 30 seconds, I am going to take a drop of the reaction mixture. I'm going to take a drop of the reaction mixture using a pipette, and I'm going to drop that into one of the wells containing iodine, every 30 seconds. Each time you do that, 
you'll see whether the reaction has completed. Has all of the starch been broken down by the amylase? If it has all been broken down, it will stay brown. If it hasn't all been broken down, it will go black. How would it have been contaminated? Uh, there might be a little bit of starch left on the, on the tray from the food test we did last week. It hasn't been washed up correctly. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to add one centimetre cubed of amylase. And I will start the stopwatch the moment I add it. So, have that ready. Three, two, one, go. So I'm going to add that. And now, to mix it, I'm just going to squirt in and out with pipette. And when it gets to 30 seconds, okay, so when it gets to 30 seconds, I can then add my first drop. Now, We'll see how quickly this goes. If it doesn't work too quickly, our other option is to make this reaction occur quicker by changing one of the controlled variables to make the whole reaction go faster. What is the controlled variable I could change? It's got to 30 seconds, here we go. That's still black, I think. Or is it? That might be brown, actually. I think that actually is completed already. So actually, this is occurring really, really quickly. So we might have actually completed the reaction already. I'll do it for another 30 seconds. See, let's wait for another 30 seconds. Uh, right, so actually there, that has already reacted inside 30 seconds. So now we have to modify the experiment slightly. We can modify it in two ways to help slow down the reaction or make the experiment better to see what's going on. Can anyone think about the way we could change the experiment? <coughs> yep. No, because iodine was we need. What could we do though? Could you put in more starch? We could put in more starch, good, so it takes longer to the starch to break down. Something else? We could put in less amylase, okay. And also what we could do with the time between the wells, we could do what? Oh, just We could make smaller time intervals to do it every 15 seconds. I'm gonna suggest that we try doing it with half the amount of amylase and see if that works. So I'm going to take our test tube. I'm going to wash this test tube out because we want this to work quite well. Okay, so again, making sure we've got no contamination. I take the starch. Okay, take the starch. Take the pH buffer. This is the one, however, that we'd expect to work this one the fastest because it's at pH 7. And amylase in the mouth, what pH would that be? Seven. Yeah, 7. So we expect this one to be the fastest. The other ones we'd expect to do what? To slower because the enzyme will... Yeah, what's the technical word? Yeah, so it won't fit. You're right. What's the technical word that means it changes shape so it won't fit? Yeah. It won't be as optimum pH right, and why would it won't be as optimum pH? What will happen to it? Denature. It'll denature, which means it'll change the shape of the active site so it won't fit. So we're ready to go. So I've got my amylase. I'm going to add half the amount of amylase this time. I'm going to reset the stopwatch. Okay. Three, two, one, go. And I will mix it. And then after 30 seconds again, I will try it. Now what I'm doing here is trialing basically. It's changing the method to make sure it works correctly. And because amylase is slightly different each time you do it, you have to basically trial this to see how well it works. So 25 seconds, so when it gets to 30, I'm gonna put a couple of drops in, the first one. Again, that's really, really fast. Okay, so we'll stop that. So we're gonna recommend we dilute it even further and actually I'll say this time we're going to dilute it down to one tenth. Okay, but I'm not gonna do that now. We'll let you try that out. 